morning, 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 Q&A, coffee with Kaz, that sort of thing this morning. So just wait for everyone to, to find us and come in and I hope that you're having a lovely week. School holidays here in the UK, so things just a little topsy-turvy, a little different than the usual strict routine that um, we're used to. But I quite like that. I quite like the... It's a challenge to find that time for yourself. Uh, and I always really appreciate that. You know, as soon as we go into holiday mode, and I was discussing this yesterday, as soon as we go into holiday mode, all the self-care stuff goes out the window. We start laying in, we start um, hanging around, eating bad food, all of that stuff. So how do we find, how do we carve out our space for, for self-care in there? So it's always a really interesting time throughout the summer. So the question that I've been asked a lot this week is about neck and shoulder issues. And obviously there's the, the free video that's, um, that's up in, in my bio if you wanna click on there and, and go in and grab that free, it's a kind of, it's a postural analysis, but it's also a tip for, or technique for how to bring yourself back into alignment, how to bring your, your students back into alignment, how to bring your clients back into alignment. But it's a daily tip. So I don't know if you know that about the gravity technique, but many years ago I was asked to go and work with some new mums. They all had very new babies. And working with them, I really found that they just, they weren't gonna get up at 6 a.m roll their mat out and do a set of exercises. So I started to create techniques that, or exercises that you can just do really easily with what you have around you and bolt them into or stitch them into your daily movements. So there's like teeth cleaning pose, telly watching pose, kettle boiling pose, uh, standing in the supermarket queue pose, things that you can just bring in to your everyday movements. And they, what I found from that was that makes the greatest changes. We get super rapid results, really, you know, over time, because you're doing them lots of times throughout the day, rather than trying to find 20 minutes, half an hour, or in some cases an hour, to do these, you know, set of exercises. And I just found that the fail rate on that was really high. So I wanted to just shift that a little bit and bring in things that you can do easily each day. So that's what the the free clip is about and that's what this, this clip is about today as well. So neck and shoulder problems, your head is heavy. It's about a stone in weight. Um, so when it's forward, because we're looking at something then the shoulders, the, muscu the muscles of the neck and the shoulders have to really get involved. And, uh, and over time, what happens is, is that our proprioception, the messages that are coming back from your body to your brain about where you are in space, they, they get skewed. So what we now feel as straight, and you can check this for yourself in the bathroom mirror, notice where you think straight is, and if you look in the mirror, bring your head back, bring your chest back, bring your shoulders back into the gravity line, just notice if there's a difference between where you feel is straight and where straight actually is. It's just an interesting thing to do. There's no judgment with that. So working with that, looking at the computer, when we're driving, watching TV, reading a book, they all require something called sharp focus. So we've got two sets of vision. We've got sharp focus and we've got fuzzy focus. So the sharp focus is when we want to take in lots of information in a really short amount of time. And it was created for us, um, if we go back into our, into our history. So the sharp focus was looking up on the hill, looking into the woods. Is there an animal that's gonna come and eat me? I saw something move. Is the person coming over the hill my friend or are they coming to burn my village down uh, and steal all my food? 
which is in my world that's that's a bad thing so with that in mind we've now got this response in the body with the sharp focus so yes the eyes go forward in the sockets the head goes forward out of the gravity line because we want to take in as much information as we possibly can but that also kicks off a chemical response in the body as well the fight and flight syndrome uh, fight and flight response so lots of adrenaline lots of cortisone uh, cortisol sorry I'm getting my words all in muddle today cortisol um, and also a glucose response as well which causes us to get ready so we're getting the body ready if that person isn't friendly if that is a saber-toothed tiger that's in the woods am I gonna hide am I gonna run or am I gonna fight it and that's all happening only these days I'm not looking at the person over the hill and your student isn't looking for the saber-toothed tiger in the woods we're looking at an email or we're trawling social media or we're watching Netflix or you know we're reading our favorite book so same response but a very different set of, of circumstances so actually to be in this fight and flight response for long periods of time with this head forward and it's the it's not so much so there is is a double-edged sword there which we go much much deeper into in the in the gravity technique courses and I'll touch on very briefly here yes there is the email that we can perceive as being very stressful that will kick off the fight and flight response but equally having the head forwards and these muscles engaged in this particular pattern also triggers the same response so you don't need the stress to be perceived by the brain you you can just have the shape of the body and the brain interprets it as the same message i hope that makes sense so what do we do about it that's that's the big thing what do we do so and this is a great one to bring in for students so if you've got students in your classes and you're asking them to lay on the floor and they can't get their head on the floor so they're the ones that you have to put the cushion or a couple of blocks something like that underneath them because you know the head is forward the upper spine is rounded head's not going on the floor and it's very uncomfortable for them yes we can put blocks under there yes we can put a cushion under there is it going to solve the problem long term no it's not so how do we tackle that and this is where this techniques like this really come into their own because we're not trying to force the issue with our student to try and get them to get their head on the floor because equally they're there going I can't get my head on the floor now I've failed it's always never a good thing so what do we do so it's just really really simple technique so we just take our hands and we're going to take our thumbs out in front of us and all I want you to do here is really focus on your thumbs focus on the creases on your thumbs see if you can see the striations in your thumbnail and get really familiar with the thumbs you know look at the skin look at the subtle nuances of the skin you know have you got white bits in your nails can you see where the new nail is coming through and you'll notice the longer you stare at your thumbs the more the eyes go forwards and there are muscles there's you know a whole schematic sort of the muscles in the eyes and, and all of that stuff so the eyes move forward first it's, it's millimeters but it makes a makes a big difference and then the head will follow so the longer we try to gather this information about our thumbs the more the head comes forwards so that's our sharp focus then we come into fuzzy focus now fuzzy focus takes us into rest and repose so fuzzy focus is looking past your thumbs and they go fuzzy hence fuzzy focus and then from there we test the periphery peripheral vision now we've got a periphery of when we're super relaxed about 180 degrees which is huge it's a huge range so we move the thumbs slowly because you'll feel the response in the shoulder you'll feel the response in the neck you feel the response in the shoulder blade everything starts to drop down and we keep move here so keep in the screen and we just keep the thumbs in the fuzzy in the fuzzy focus as soon as they've gone out of the vision it's no good we want to bring that back in so we want them in the fuzzy focus now you might find initially that 
your fuzzy focus range isn't that big, but practice, practice always, practice makes perfect. The more we practice, you'll feel the drop on the back of the body and then the jaw. And because the eyes are already in fuzzy focus, they've already dropped back into, or started their descent back into the sockets. And then the rest of the body follows suit. And this takes a little bit of time. So we give the brain time to respond, the brain time to send the, the messages down to the body, the body to go, right, we've got that. And then we action it. So it's that allowing the, the body time to, to process and then action what we've asked it to do. So we keep moving with that. You'll find collarbones, front of the chest, all of that stuff. Notice where you run into resistance. It's different for everybody, but there might be resistance on the front of the chest, there might be resistance in the throat, in the jaw, in the facial features, you know, all of that stuff. So we just play with that. And that's fuzzy focus. So have a play with that. As always, pop me a comment um, or pop me a DM. I'm always really interested to hear what, what you think of these techniques and how you get on with them, whether they make a big difference for you or, you know, just let me know. It's really interesting. And if you want to come and work with me, um, as I say, there's a free clip up in, the, uh, up in my bio at the moment and the course for movement teachers is um, happening in September. So it'd be great to have you along on that. So if you want to know more on that, you can pop me a message at kaz at thegravitytechnique.com and just get in touch. And it's great to share these things with you. So have a play with that, particularly if you're watching too much Netflix or for those of us that are still working and looking at the screen, this is a great technique for you to bring in at the end of the day. And for you movement teachers out there, hopefully that's useful with your students that are finding it difficult to lay on the floor or you're just not seeing that the head is coming into alignment with the rest of the body. So have a play with that and let me know how you get on and have a lovely weekend. Take care.